Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Welcome everyone to South Kitsap High School. We are happy to join you to join us for uh, this boys varsity basketball game between the South Kitsap Wolves and the Stadium High School Tigers. Uh, I'm Chris Keough, and for the very first time in the booth, I have my brother Nick Keough. So Nick, what kind of uh, game are we looking at this evening? Well, we should have a great contest ahead of us. South enters the game with a 6-3 and three mark, fresh off the Les Schwab Christmas Classic Tournament, where they took two of the three games. On the other side of the court, you got Stadium, still trying to find their rhythm at 2-7, and seven, but had a terrific performance against Wilson High two nights ago, where they just fell short 63-57. So it's a big game, especially for South tonight, with Wilson win... And here we go for the National Anthem, oh, folks. Yep. Senior forward, 
34, Leon Ladeau. Big game, especially for South tonight. With a win, as long as as well as a Wilson loss, South Kids have to jump all the way up to third in the bridge division. Very tough division this year. Additionally, Stadium is uh, in the rebuilding phase right now. They have one league win over Olympia, but have matched their win total from last season up to this point. And uh, with the inclement weather we had last month, uh, I believe they have a few games to make up from December. So definitely on the rebound, and uh, we're looking to have a Quite an entertaining game. It's nice to get the kids back on the floor. Absolutely. It looks like we'll have Ricky King jump in for South. And for Stadium, we will have Zach Meikle. And South controls the tip. South Kitsap definitely has a big size advantage in this game. I'd like to see him work the ball inside. Uh, where Stadium's probably going to have to take what they can get as far as outside shots. Um, but we'll see early in the game. Yes. Good drive by Meikle there. Just misses the shot. Oh. Rebound stays on this side, Stadium ball. Tend to try to work it down to Minkle. Quick outside jump shot. South controls it. Driving the lane, rebound Minkle. Stadium coming back the other way. Looks like he's trying to push it. Oh, now they'll slow up. Looks like they're going to set something up here. That young man is the smallest man on the floor, Calvin Alvarez, 5'5". Sets a good screen for Minkle, puts it in. Very nice. We got a foul in the backcourt. Number three, Calvin, Kevin Alvarez, as you were saying, smallest guy in the court. Be interesting to see if they'll keep up that uh, that full court press on the point guard. If Alvarez will do that or if they'll uh, they'll bring more guys down. Looks like they're going to put up uh, set up a little full court trap. Yeah. They clear out. All right, Curry able to bring it up the court. Again, trying to work that ball to the inside. Big rebound. Nice put back in one. Who fan the bucket? Ricky King, senior, six foot eight. Incredible. How about that? It's amazing. How tall are you in high school, Chris? You think? Probably about six three. Six three, huh? Six, six, On a good day. Yeah, on a great day. <laughs> That was the first foul on McKeel, by the way, and it'll be interesting, you know, to see if they can get him into foul trouble. I mean, he's the only guy over six foot three inches for Stadium, so if he get, ends up coming out of the game, but for it, should be, it should be easy picking down below. Absolutely, look for him to work it down once he comes out. All right. I think he might have got away with the travel there. Good board. I'll tell you what, Ricky King is having a very good start to this game, already with a couple boards and three points. They'll work it into him again. Ooh, just good turnaround him. jump shot. That's exactly what King has to do. He's got to fill the lane. Absolutely. That big frame, too. He can definitely uh, take up a lot of space in the post. All right. Pinkle with his own rebound, Oops. tosses it away. That's up, man. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Just at this point, Stadium's uh, offense starts and ends with Mingle trying to get him the ball down in the post, anywhere they can get him get him the ball. So South's going to have to keep it away from him. Absolutely. And Alvarez, very nice steal. Oh, and South steals it right back. Nice drive and the basket. Tion Curry, great penetration, catching the defense off guard. Absolutely. South will try to capitalize on their second three-pointer of the game, three-point opportunity. You see that a lot, you know, when a ball's turned over one time, turned over the next time, the defense is really caught on their heels. So Absolutely. Curry did a great job of blowing by all the defenders, putting the ball in the hoop. He did a good job of recognizing getting up the court. Defense wasn't set, made him pay. That's uh, the first foul on sophomore Chase Hillis, six-foot sophomore. All right, looks like Stadium wants to control it here. Oh, Alvarez, no fear, smallest man on the court. As you said, 5-5, five, five, going right at the big men. Looks like they're content to swing it around the perimeter, trying to get an open jump shot. We try to get it. There it is again, trying to get that ball back to Maple. Any chance they can get. Good take on the baseline nice there. Good board. South gets that, bringing it back down the floor with a 5 2 lead, three minutes into the ball game. Well, good and idea there by Curry. Over. Just couldn't hold on to the ball. Alvarez, Alvarez goes Ooh. to coast. Nice pass. Well, Alvarez had the right idea to get uh, Mickey the ball. Um, just tough to squeeze it in, in between those two defenders. You got one guy on you, you got a chance, but when there's two guys there, they were able to collapse that pocket there. Definitely. Pretty good. It's almost like Meikle really didn't expect the pass coming. It was such a nice one. Uh, so. and, uh, substitution here, Ricky King uh, checking out of the game. Uh, we got Joey as Osinski, also 6'6". Uh, he's a junior. Joey's a junior. South Kitsap using that size advantage, playing in the straight man-to-man. -man. Looks like Stadium's trying to set up a few uh, few pick and rolls, try to get some separation. They're not going to be able to put up those outside jump shots if the uh, South Kitsap defenders are playing them so tight. Near turnover there. Wolves are playing good defense. They're not trying to give them any easy shots. Nope. Nicole recovers the handoff. That's Alvarez. Well, it's clear early on that Stadium's trying to work the two-man game with Alvarez and Minkle. Yeah. I think uh, Alvarez is probably their most explosive player, and Minkle may be their most polished at this point. And well, just as we mentioned his name, Minkle checks out. Look for South to possibly work the ball inside here. Ricky Fajita, six foot two, junior, checks in for Minkle for Stadium. Just as we said, they will try to pound that ball inside. Michael Longmire, senior forward. Just another two-point bucket up for the Wolves. Alvarez having a lot of trouble getting that ball past half court. Reset. It's a good shot by Alvarez. It looks like, Nick, it looks like South Kitsap doing a good job of uh, picking up those screens Absolutely. by the Tigers. Well, you can tell able to uh, you know, collapse on them pretty tight. Absolutely. You can tell Stadium's really trying to work that outside shot. Like we've been saying the whole game, that height advantage, you know, it might end up hurting them, but we'll see. A nice drive. Another good drive by Tion Curry. Wait to see who the foul's on. All right, so it looks like Ricky Fujita was the one who picked up the foul on that. That's only his first, though. Something to keep an eye on, though, that is 14 fouls early for Stadium, yes. early in this ball game. So if the Wolves continue to take the ball to the basket, we might be looking at a heck of a lot of free throws uh, before halftime. Absolutely. Could be, a, could be a big advantage. Birthday boy himself, Leon Ledeau, checks in. And here come the Wolves with the full court pressure. All right, able to get it inbounds. Looks 
like Dio's going to try to set something up here. Notice Meikle didn't spend a whole lot of time on the bench. He's back in for stadium right now. Maybe look to see them try to work that ball in down to him there. Absolutely. Good penetration. Nice dish out. Ooh, that's a tough call right there. He might have lost his footing, but it looked like a small bump there. Well, I think he might have actually stepped on Henley's foot there. Tough call for the Wolves. There's Meikle right there with the turnaround jump shot. They're taking good shots. They're just not knocking them down right now. Absolutely. Wolves lead 9-4 to four with two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Again, Curry trying to penetrate. Nice drive by Ledeau. Nico with the board. Alvarez wants to push it there. Down low to Fujita. Nice move. Good Very drive. Nice take. A lot of contact there, but he put it up strong. Oh, nice pass. Very nice pass. Good look down below. Two points, Austin Siegel. And Tion Curry's doing a great job getting this offense set up. You know, they're not rushing anything, and they're, they're executing well at this moment. Mm. Legal again, penetration. Looks like a call on the floor. Joey Ozinski. South's going to make a three-man substitution here. Bevy of subs coming in here. Who we got, Nick? Oh, it looks like we got Trey Haslam will be in. As well as Yvonne Rybachuk and Isaiah Davis. Davis uh, was starting earlier in the year for the Wolves. Uh, he's claimed to be the fastest man on the team. Actually, uh, some of our colleagues say that he's the fastest man on the team. He's only a sophomore wearing number 10. So we'll look to see if he uh, if he's able to blow by some of these stadium uh, stadium defenders. The speed's going to be a very important factor tonight for stadium. Miko going up strong. No hesitation by this man. The big thing you notice with the substitutions that Coach Callahan made is that he's going to some bigger bodies. Looks like Vegeta and um, the, uh, the point guard there. Albert, Albert as they, uh, they probably don't miss too many sessions in the weight room. So to try to find some guys that are a little more physical, uh, keep up with them. Definitely, definitely. Callahan's be been around strategy. for years, so he is a pro at this. He's going to try to find the mismatches. Got about approaching a minute 15 left in the first quarter. The Wolves lead 11 to 6, hosting the Stadium Tigers. Now that's one of those calls that can go either way, but it looks like he may have dropped his shoulder in there. Well, Siegel did a great job of setting his feet and holding his ground. You know, with a lot of the younger players, it seems like they'll they'll get those happy feet when a guy uh, makes contact with them, and then the foul's called on them. But he held his ground and hit the deck for the Wolves. Absolutely. Well, Siegel, a senior, may have played a factor in there. That veteran, uh, veteran IQ. Might have been called as an illegal illegal screen. Is that what that, that looked like? I think that might have been the call there. I don't. Ricky King is not happy. That will uh, that'll be King's first foul. Could be something to keep an eye on later in the game. You know, he is the big man on the team, so it'd be nice to have him on the floor. Definitely. definitely. Game goes on. We'll expect him really to focus on Meikle, especially. It seems like Stadium is very. Oh, nice steal there. Davis forced the turnover, and Curry came up with the ball. Very good. Ooh, dangerous pass by Davis. That's a good shot. Absolutely. Well, you notice he stepped up there. He didn't take the long two, realized he had time, collected himself. Excellent play. It's a sophomore right there, Trey Haslam.
foul call. Looks like it's on number 11 there. Vegeta, that's three quick ones for him right there. That's that's three fouls in the first quarter. Four seconds left real quick, ladies and gentlemen. One, uh, maybe one long shot here. Davis will take it, puts it up. <laughs> All right, first quarter wrapped up. South Kitsap Wolves lead 13 to six over the visiting stadium Tigers. One thing to keep in mind, uh, we didn't get a chance to mention before the broadcast. Um, you hate to call them must-win games. You know, every game obviously is a must-win game. But uh, the Wolves, uh, this is uh, last year was the first time since 1999 that the uh, South Kitsap Wolves uh, were, they failed to reach the district playoffs. Yeah. And I'm sure that's wearing on the team, and, and uh, they definitely want to get back there. Absolutely. So winning games like this, especially at home, is crucial down the stretch. Callahan going over the play. I think it's a matter of trying to get Meikle uh, contained. If they, can, if they can stop, if they can shut him down, the Wolves should be in good shape. Absolutely, and as we were saying, Ricky King only with one foul, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, he's got to stay out of foul trouble to really shut down Meikle. We'll see in the second quarter if the Wolves will maybe use that height advantage just a little bit more, work the ball down low. Maybe, uh, maybe try to have more possessions. It seemed like Stadium was trying to kind of build the clock, which is understandable, mm -hmm. uh, to try to get that good shot against a bigger team. But uh, they might be able to wear them down a little bit down below. And we've got some more substitutions here. Checking in for Stadium is uh, Clayton Long, uh, six-foot senior, number 15. Along with uh, Ian Badillo, he's back in the game, a senior, 6'1". Shot just off the mark. Good rebound there. Stadium. Mika looks to reset. Intent to swing it around. And again, like we were talking about, neck at the break. Kind of working that clock. You know, trying to trying to work it down to get a to get a really good shot. Well, South is playing. Oh, excellent move there by Meikle. Uh, oh, they're going to call offensive foul on that one. They're going to say he dropped his shoulder. Well, that will be Meikle's second. Meikle's second foul, offensive foul. Um, of course, doesn't translate into a one and one situation for the Wolves. Yep, and it looks like Johnny Jensen's going to come in for him. Probably a good idea here by Stadium. They want to equal fresh that the whole game, so you know he gets the rest, stays out of foul trouble. It's gonna be interesting to see where Stadium puts the ball. Who's Stadium came going. out with a real unique trap there. It was a it was a it was a half court trap, but they were uh, they were stopping the Wolves just before they crossed the line. Very interesting. Good yeah. good uh, good good play call. Down up and in by King again. There's that size advantage kicking in, Nick. He could just grab it and put it right back up. Didn't have to put it back on the floor at all. Absolutely. 15-6 now, the count. About six and a half minutes left in the half. And I tell you what, we've got Johnny Jensen, number 23, on King. Oh, excellent shot there. But Badillo again from about 12 feet. And here's that trap we saw just the play before. Good job of driving it by the sophomore there again, and King. King. Ooh, they're going to call steps on that, yeah. Shuffled his feet a little bit. But I tell you what, King has been very active on the boards tonight, and as we've been talking about all night, that height advantage, but they're going to need to box him out if Stadium's going to be able to crash those boards. They, they can't give up many offensive boards tonight. I'm going to tell you, when you're the biggest man on the floor, all eyes are on you, too. So th Absolutely. that little shuffle there was uh, definitely magnified by that. So Wolves still sticking in a roll. It's kind of a kind of a trap type defense, but that Stadium's a, finding space. I tell you what, excellent pass there, an even better finish there by Johnny Jensen in traffic. Two straight baskets, cl uh, close the lead down to uh, to five for the, uh, for the for the home team Wolves. Picked up his dribble earlier there. They're really denying the ball from King, especially. Interesting Stadium playing a straight man-to-man -man defense against this size. You it's like they're relying on their speed. Yeah, you think they would switch to something of a 2-3, of a maybe even a 3-2 zone. Try to contain those big men. Yeah. 
The interesting thing about King is that not only is he the tallest guy on the floor, but he's the biggest guy on the floor. You know, generally, you know, the younger players, it's either one or the other. You know, but with right. him, it seems like he's got it both. So, absolutely. All right, first shot up and in there. They have in Rybichuk. Rocks down the second. That'll extend the Wolves' lead back to seven. It also gives uh, Stadium the uh, eighth team foul of yeah. the half. And now they'll be in the bonus, shooting one and one for the rest of the game. Little south. Under the rest of the half, I should say. Good dish by Alvarez, maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit too too deep under the pocket. They had the trees under there, so <laughs> that might have been a tough place to put a shot up. What I'm really seeing now is it, it seems that South Kitsap is much more up tempo, uh, trying to get that quick shot. Not necessarily a bad one, but definitely trying to pull the trigger a little bit faster. Whereas Stadium, really working for a for a you know long possession. Yeah, the fewer possessions, the better, I believe. Excellent D there by Isaiah Davis, able to get his hand in there and stop that fast break. You know, earlier in the season, Nick, um, Stadium had a really tough time shutting down opponents. They were giving up an average of, you know, roughly 70 points a game. Uh, so by, by holding that ball longer, I think extending the, their plays uh, to slow down the, uh, the Wolves' offense. We'll see if they can keep that up in the second half. Absolutely. King with another board. Isaiah Davis down on yeah. the block right now. Now this is interesting. They have King on the outside, but Davis down below. Callahan. And thus Callahan calls the timeout. There we go. Well, maybe now yeah, they've got to get that. Uh, they've got to get that figured out. Yeah. You can't have King 25 feet away from the basket at six eight. Absolutely. Put him on the block. We'll see what they do at this timeout here. Yeah. You know, I've, I know that through the years South Kitsap is what I've seen is they've done a very good job of uh, that that quick play you know, yes. right, right out of the timeout. And, uh, you know, the coach with a lot of experience, he's, he's seen a lot of it, so he knows the right one to call probably more often than not. Look to see him try to work it down to those bigs again. You know, yeah. as, as this play's gone, they're kind of getting away from that, so we'll see if they uh, they try to work that ball down low a little bit more. Yeah, they have such a height advantage. I mean, it's a wonder why they're, why they're coming out from that. Well, we got 17 to 10 right now. Just over four minutes left in the second quarter. South Kitsap up seven, and they will inbound the ball. The visiting Stadium Tigers are hanging tough. Absolutely. Little bump, no call. Good basket right there. Trey Haslam. You know, it's really good. Uh, it's a really good sign for the Wolves to see uh, Haslam and uh, and Davis. And just as I mentioned, their names they check out. Mm -hmm. um, at least uh, looks like Davis is out of the ball game. But both of them are sophomores. Both of them both of them getting significant minutes in varsity action. And that's uh, it's definitely going to help the team out uh, in the years to come. Absolutely. Have that kind of experience, priceless. Well, South Kitsap is also a very young team. Only five seniors on the floor. On the Michael team. Longmire taking it up strong. It's a ninth team foul for the Stadium Tigers. One more, and uh, that'll put the Wolves in the double bonus with about three and a half minutes left. And you notice uh, on that play, uh, as we were talking, uh, they were talking about going back inside. And what do they do very first play? Callan has them go right inside. Coming back in for stadium is uh, point guard Alvarez and uh, and also Sam Walters. He's a 6'3 junior. One mile off in the throw up. It's good defense right there, getting that ball back for the Wolves. Oh, and the basket. Wow. wow. 
great hustle. I'll tell you what, Austin Siegel just gave his all on that play. Able to get the loose ball, get the board, put it back up, and one. Now he's shooting a free throw. You know, and you almost feel bad for the for the, the stadium guy down low because he had great position. He got his hands on the ball and it was tipped away from him. But he, he did a heck of a job of boxing out, and that just shows that height and size advantage. It's, it's huge. All right, well, the dough will come back in. King will take a little rest. Got to get, gotta get Leon Ledeau a birthday basket, I think. <laughs> I, think he's, uh, I think he's due. Well, Siegel completes the three-point play. So that three-point play may, uh, ended up being a, what, a four-point play on that uh, possession. So we got the Wolves 22 to 10 now. Yes, we do. A Biggest lead of the over night. Three, yeah, a little over three minutes left. Alvarez trying to set something up. Ooh. Oh, he jumped the route there and just missed it. The big one in the corner. It's a good shot. Just off. Scrapping for the ball down low. Absolutely. Good hustle. Excellent play. Johnny Jensen. 6'3 senior. I'll tell you what, with Stadium Lax and Height, they're really making up its scrappiness right now. And they're they're impressing me at this moment. You know, they're they're fighting for every rebound. The tricky thing is it's it's ending up on the you know, as far as the foul situation. You know they're they're scrappy and they're 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 understandably trying to make plays and they're they're definitely outmatched as far as size goes. Um, and we'll just have to see how that goes in the second half. What kind of adjustments Stadium's going to have to make because they're they really are playing excellent defense to hold the Wolves to 22 points and yes. then of course South playing outstanding to only hold uh, Stadium to uh, to a dozen. So yes, and only four fouls for the Wolves. And with that pressure they've been doing, they've been running the full court pressure. That is quite impressive. A timeout taken with two minutes, 51 seconds left in the half. Possession arrow to the Wolves. Looks like King is going to get back in the game. Expect him maybe to go the rest of the quarter. What do you think, Chris? I think so. we got King, Longmire, Ledeau. Uh, Looks like a starting point guard Tion Curry. Curry is in the handle. Oh. Additionally, Trey Haslam's back in the game, sophomore for South Kitsap. Yeah. Tell you what, I don't know if Tion Curry mishandled the ball or Stadium was able to get a hand in there, but just touches the half court line. Turnover to Stadium. Curry playing tight defense on Alberta's. Looks like uh, South's going to set up a trap for that point guard. Tell you what, Alvarez is going to have nightmares about the South kids that pressure. They have not let him relax all game. Two, three guys, you notice, as soon as he gets the ball past half court. Well, you notice you haven't seen much of Meikle since the first quarter, and I think South Kitsap figured it out. Yeah. You know, the majority of the offense runs through Alberta's and Meikle. So if they can shut those two down, it. Uh, a couple of the other guys looked like they had a tough time discovering the ball. Boy, King with another walk. Second second travel call on King, and I don't think the uh, the gallery likes it too much. No. He needs to calm himself, collect himself. King doesn't like it too much. Oh, Good and defense. King with the steal. Excellent. That's how you do it right there. You make a mistake, and you make up for it with hustle. Mm. And another turnover. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to say that ball touched the end line. They're going to give that ball back to Stadium, it looks like. Oh, nope, nope. overturn the call. We're going to give the ball back to the to the Wolves. Leon the Dota inbound. Little lob to King, perhaps. Oh, oh, he had the open man. Curry puts it up. King, big rebound here. Watch his feet. He's got to watch those steps on the deck. Able to kick it out. Another one, yeah. Got a foul on the floor on Alberta's. Shooting two, right? Looks like he's shooting two. Yep, we are in now in the double bonus. Just under two minutes, minute 58 to be exact. South by 10 over the visiting stadium, Tigers. It's just as we suspected, though, uh, given how many fouls Stadium had in the middle of the first quarter, they had about four or five halfway through the first quarter, and now it's coming back to uh, kind of haunt them a little bit. Two minutes left, like uh, Nick was saying. And from here on out, South shooting, South shooting too. So yes, absolutely. You're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of ball work down in the lane. 
Probably not going to settle for too many outside jump shots if you're the Wolves and if you're Stadium. Going to try to nurse the clock just a little bit, maybe uh, cut down, limit the possessions that the uh, the Wolves are able to have uh, for the last two minutes. And some offense. Let's see if they might actually try to set up a play for a three. Ooh. That's uh, good ball. Looked like almost. It almost looked like two walks. Great pass by Lido. Oh, and uh, might have gotten away with another travel. Yeah, but if the ref doesn't blow the whistle, it's all good. The uh, LeBron Dr LeBron James crab dribble. <laughs> what it looked like there. Yeah, hey, I thought that was a legitimate Ooh. move. Good hustle there by Lado. Oh, and they're going to give it back to South. Not sure what the call would be there, but it is South possession. Looks like it might have been called. No, it wasn't called a jump ball. Looks like it might have been a kickball. Could have possibly been. Didn't didn't hear a foul call either. A dangerous pass. Ooh. That's uh, that's a jump ball possession arrow back to the Wolves. Excellent play by Jensen there. South Kitsap holding on to a 14-point lead and again trying to work the ball down low. They are in the double bonus and they've got the bigger bodies. Why not? Yeah. Boy, and I tell you, Chris, we look up at this clock and South has only given up 12 points. Pretty interesting to see. 14 minutes of play, or about 14 and a half. Ledo. Nope. King with another board. He, uh, he's just too big one. and too strong. He really is for some of these guys down there. It's, uh, it's tough. Like you were saying, he's just as, as strong as he is tall. And, you know, they don't have anybody height-wise to match up, and they don't have anybody strength-wise. So he's kind of having his way down on the down in the paint. And we'll see what uh, stadium, what kind of adjustment they can make uh, in order to, uh, to kind of at least slow King down a little bit. Seems like the only guy that slowed King down so far is himself. A <laughs> couple, uh, couple of walks, but... Point play puts, up uh, puts a lead to 29-12 Wolves. A uh, little under a minute, uh, about a minute and a quarter left in the half. Oh, and there's Meikle. Off. Big board here. South Kitsap looking to push it again, looks like. And Stadium's really getting those open threes, but just not converting. Curry. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah, that's going to be a carry. A little bit of a carry on Curry. Got a little excited. Saw the lane, thought he could hit it. Just held it a little bit. All right. 55 seconds left, 29-12 Wolves. Stadium to inbound. You know, let's see if Stadium can possibly make this a nice little two-for-one for them. In the half. Remember, there is no shot clock in high school basketball. Ooh, they're going to say Meikle stepped on the end line. Turn over to South. King get, King's got to get the ball across at midcourt there. There he goes. Look at the big man handling it. Good oh, look by Lego. Stays King. with it. King's going up with that. Yeah. Ooh. Stadium with numbers coming the other way. It's the outside for the three. Mm -hmm. Boy, and those threes are just not falling for Stadium. They're getting the looks they want. And you know the iron's really unkind tonight for them. They're taking good shots. Absolutely. Yeah, they're just they're just not falling for them in this first half. Well, and I think that's what. Oh, oh, near steal by Stadium, possibly. Wow. I tell you what, that is a very heads up play there by Lido. He knew he was in the other side of the court. He knew he had the presence of mind to jump back over, grab the ball, call a timeout. Excellent play. And now we're gonna have two seconds left. Stout's gonna have just enough time to get a shot off here. Let's see what Callahan decides to run. 20-second timeout is what it looks like, so just have time to set a pick and put up a three-pointer. Okay. Well, everything's worked for him tonight, so why not? Maybe give it to the birthday boy, Lido. Why not? Hey. What I'd really like to see, though, is I'd like to see a lob down low. I, I understand there's two seconds left, but you could get a you get a cheap foul, or you can uh, have King or one of the other big bodies just put one right over the top of the defender. Not a bad idea. We'll, we'll see. They'll, they'll be inbounding it from half court. It'll be interesting to see what they see. Maybe start King out at the top and have him run down low. Looks like he's heading right down low. There's the lob. No. Got two seconds. Puts it up. Oh. Well, good idea there by Callahan out of the timeout. Excellent pass. Got the shot they wanted. 
Dartmouth South will enter the half up 29 to 12 over the visiting stadium Tigers. Right. It was all the South Kids have Wolves in the first half. Um, not a whole lot more to say than that. Stadium had their looks. They put up some good shots, but I mean, the, the sheer physicality and the height for South Kitsap, um, there's no indication at this point that, uh, that they're gonna they're gonna let off the uh, the throttle. Yeah. Uh, we'll, you know, we're probably looking at uh, maybe a little uh, three-quarter court, full court trap, perhaps by Stadium to try to uh, disrupt the ball handlers a little bit. Yeah. Because at this point, if they let them get set up in that half-court offense, then uh, they're gonna probably continue to work the ball down low, which they've had uh, you know much success with. Yeah, and I tell you what, they might have to work on denying King the ball there. All right. Tonight's halftime performance will be courtesy of the South Kitsap School District's dance teams coming together under the theme, Building a Legacy. This year's second annual all-district dance will include dancers from John Sedgwick, Cedar Heights, and Marcus Whitman Junior Highs, as well as dancers from the South Kitsap High School dance team. Tonight they'll be dancing a hip-hop number choreographed by Carrie Smith of Carlsboro, California. And the dancers want to send a special thanks to Kate Grieve for organizing tonight's event. We'll see you after halftime. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. We're just about ready to start the second half. South Kitsap leading 29-12. I'm Nick Keo with along with Chris, bringing you tonight's boys basketball action. Chris, what do you think of the game so far? What do you expect in the second half? I think uh, the second half is going to be a whole lot of the same. I think South Kitsap's got to continue to try to pound it inside. I think that um, Mikul for uh, for Stadium's really going to have to get things going for them uh, to, to get back in this ball game. And now Verdes. Their, uh, their point guard's going to need to uh, to get it down low to them. So Absolutely. we'll see what kind of adjustments are made. We're going to see some defensive adjustments, so uh, keep an eye on that. Yeah, well, you, not you noticed the two-man game with Alvarez and Meikle earlier. Let's see if they might go right back to that. And they do exactly that. Get it to Real Mikul. quick. Oh, they're going to call that offensive. That is a tough call. Boy, that could have gone either way right there. Mikkel with a great so. drive, a great position there by South. Boy, I think that's Mikkel's third. Yeah, that is Mikkel's third foul. Oh, that's um, going to be tough. We'll see how long he stays in the ball game, but I think uh, Stadium's at the point uh, where they're going to have to keep him in the yeah. game. There's no way they're going to be able to take him out at this point. Oh. That's uh, yep, Yeah, that's another yeah. walk by King. You just got to plant those feet and not, uh, not get too antsy with the ball. That's the right thing. Just walk back down court, though. So, Chris, I'm kind of disappointed. They were singing happy birthday to Leon Ledeau earlier in the crowd, and uh, I think we missed it. Yeah, I think we missed that. Uh, if we haven't said it yet, happy birthday to Leon Ledeau. 
Number 34. I don't, uh, you know, I guess it can't be said enough. We just got to get him a basket. <laughs> Meikle kicking it out for the three. King with uh, another board. I think that gives him uh, six for the game. Nadeau trying to get it inside. Well, good effort there by Henley to try to keep the ball in bounds. So it looked, overtain. It looked like Henley might have rolled an ankle there, mm. but he's staying in the ball game. You don't see any limp, so maybe you just walk it off there. So you're going to call hold on uh, Chase Hillis. He is uh, the only starting sophomore for the uh, Stadium Tigers at six feet tall, wearing number 10. That'll be his second foul. And I believe that that is actually the first team foul. Uh, the uh, the first foul of the half with uh, Meikle was an offensive foul, not counting uh, against the uh, the team total. And there we go, the birthday boy, Ledeau, with a couple. Leon Ledeau, birthday basket. 31-12 Wolves, seven minutes left in the third quarter. Meikle with the ball, he'll drive on King. King does a good job. Meikle nowhere to go. King, good position. I'll tell you what, we talk about King's size, but he is really good fundamentals in the rebound and down low. Lido again. Feeling it. Hey, why not? That's a that's a ticky-tack foul there. Um, Get a push on Curry. I was going to say that's uh, not typical of a senior to make a foul uh, 50 feet away from the basket, but nah. it looked like he was trying to make a, a quick steal catch uh, Alverde's uh, off guard. Wolves come out in a... Straight man-to-man -man defense, start the second half. Nickel from the free throw line, just off. Wolves pushing it, trying to get those numbers inside to King. Boy, and they have four Three guys, guys Four guys, wow. Keeping King from the ball. It's a good drive there. All right. Cleaned Siegel up by, cleaned up up by Austin Siegel. That, uh, that gives Siegel eight points. That extends the south lead to 21. Coach is going to take a timeout. Well, we're just two minutes into the second half here, and, you know, you would hope st or you'd hope Stadium would come out with a lot of fire, and they've been coming out with a lot of energy, but just the shots aren't dropping. They've yet to make a basket this half. Well, it's early in the second half, but uh, it's obvious that uh, South Kitsap might, uh, might have quite an advantage at least get the ball up and down the floor, which you know you thought at the first half that'd be Stadium's strong suit, yeah. but I think it's wearing down on them a little bit, having to get banged around by the bigger bodies. By the second half, they've been working so hard uh, to keep South off the boards that uh, it's hard to have enough in the tank to uh, yeah. really push the floor. Uh, Fajita's checking back in for Stadium number 11 here, with uh, and he has three fouls himself, so. The thing about Fujita is that uh, he's listed at about 6'2", but as far as physically, he should be able to uh, to match the uh, the power, uh, the size of some of the bigger guys like uh, like Austin Siegel down low for South. Looks like that's who he's matched up against. Fadillo is just going to try to set something up here. Had the three, passed it up for the long two. Good find inside. Good drive by Meikle. Tough call. Uh, he may not have had his feet completely planted. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think the two defenders kind of knocked him off his guard as well. Mm -hmm. Meikle's had a tough enough time when he's uh, when he's getting singled up against a bigger guy, and then uh, when they double him up, just as we thought, though, I mean, it, it, it's clear that they're trying to get the ball into Meikle. Okay. So what South done in the second half is make an adjustment to put two guys on him. Yeah. Um, we, keep him from getting the ball. You know, and that's... That's, I mean, you could tell. They're trying to go to Meikle, and that's the best strategy for South on defense. South will retain the possession after the dangerous pass by Ledeau. Again, playing the high-low post there with, uh, with Austin as well as King. Curry hits the three. Boy, and that, that brings the score 36 to 12 South, three minutes into the second half. Gives Curry seven points on the, on the night.
Five minutes left in the third quarter, 24 point lead. Looks like number uh, 13, Ian Badillo. Good defense. Who's a starter for Stadium came back in the game here. And, uh, we could tell Fujita really tried to make something happen for his team, you know, and that'll be his fourth foul. And he comes up limping a little bit. 5'9", junior guard Nate Henley is uh, calling out a signal here. Looks like they're gonna run more of that uh, half-court trap that seemed to be doing a little bit uh, damage to South in the first half. So Stadium's gonna get back into that uh, three-quarter full-court trap. Yeah, see if they can't throw them out of their rhythm here. And that, uh, and that was actually the fourth foul on Fujita. Yep. All right, so Jensen will check in for him. They got the, uh, they got the team fouls corrected as well. It looks like three team fouls for Stadium and only one for the uh, SK Wolves at this point. Yeah. Good ball movement. Ooh. Just in and out. Yeah. Big board. Planned up there by number 24, Austin Siegel. Another bucket for Siegel. Puts him in double digits on the evening. You know, and South is such a young team, but you see guys like Siegel, Curry, and King all stepping up, all seniors, playing great tonight. They figure you put the work in your sophomore and junior year by your senior year. You know, the goal is to be able to spend that kind of time on the floor, and it's nice to see that uh, the hard work's paying off for them. Absolutely. A little sloppy as they cross midcourt. Get the ball back in the point guard's hands. Great drive. Gets his own rebound. Boy, and you know it's tough when Tion, Tion Curry, the smallest guy on South team, 5'10", grabbing boards. You know, you got to worry about the big 6'8 guys, the 6'3 guys. And See they call this one on here. Looks like they called it on Albertus, and that is his uh, third foul of the game. Looks like we've got a couple of substitutions coming in for both sides. And checking in for the Wolves is going to be uh, Joey Ozinski, 6'6", uh, junior, back in the ballgame. Christian Page, sophomore, six-footer. As well as Sam Walters, it looks like, entered the game. Coming in for stadium. 6'3", junior. Curry good on the second. Pushed the lead 40-12 to 12 in favor of South Kitsap, just under four minutes. In the uh, third, third quarter. quarter. South going with the full court man, almost like a man trap. Stadium still trying to work that ball into Meikle. Kind of trying to run that inside out game. What they're going to need to do at this point is they're going to have to put up some long range jumpers. Oh, nothing's falling for Meikle. Well, and a great play by Alvarez to get the space, get down low, and kick it to Meikle. Meikle might have been lucky there. He didn't get a frustration foul, but it's nice to see they let the kids play on that one. Lado goes strong to the basket, drops the foul. And it's almost like Meikle was surprised he was that open. The guy's been getting double teamed all night, and he did not expect the easy layup. All right. Puts Lado on the free throw line here. The first foul for uh, Sam Walters there. Lado with the first one up and in. Strong rebound there for Johnny Jensen. Albertes. Fouled on the floor by Lido. Got Lido. him on the floor. Yep. And I hate to throw salt on the wounds, but you know, Stadium has yet to score a basket this half. You know, we're almost five minutes into it, and you really feel for them because they are playing hard out there. Well, it's a combination of things. You know, it's not just South Kitsap shutdown defense or Stadium's lack of, uh, you know, execution. I mean, they're, they're making good plays. They're just missing the baskets. Oh, he's got them open. Albertus. And Albertus puts it up. And there we go. First basket of the, the half for Stadium there. You set it up, he knocked it down. Absolutely. You know, there almost could have been a push there on Tion Curry, but not enough for the refs to call. And Curry strong that is a to the great basket. drive. Left hand strong to the basket. Boy, he willed that one in. He wanted that basket. Said, hey, point guard, you can do it. I can do it. 
and some right back to Alberta. You hear the peanut gallery chant and one there. It's almost it's almost like they're getting restless. Thinking uh, what we're going to see in this fourth quarter is uh, definitely you're going to see Coach Callahan unload that bench oh, yeah. and uh, give some of those younger players a chance. All right, Alberta's with back-to-back -back baskets. He's got all five of the points here in the half. He's a good player. He's a, he's a strong player, strong point guard. And just missed a couple of those in the first half, or this could be a much tighter ball game. Yep. Oh, and there goes Alberta's with another steal. Ooh. Almost a nice putback. Just missed the layup, and then Jensen came and followed through. Got his hand on the rim, but couldn't put it down. Called the first foul on uh, on Siegel here. It looks like. Oh, never mind. Turnover. SK ball. And back to that full court press for uh, the in. Tigers. Yep. Well, and it looks like they're going to put Christian Page there on the, the quick guard Curry. Maybe get a little height on him. Curry, nice look. Mm. Boy, he got Siegel. The Siegel just missed him. Penetration there, and uh, Siegel just took his eye off the ball for just a second. Good idea. Approaching two minutes left in the uh, in the third quarter with a 43-17 ball game. Curry pushing it up, and Ladeau, the birthday boy, with another basket. 45-17 South, just under two minutes to go. I say, looking down on this court here, Joey Ozinski, who had that last rebound, he's. So he's every bit of 6'6". Six, six. Definitely a big guy in the middle. Only, only a junior. Hmm. Passes it to nowhere. And South you know, gets that ball. And I think uh, Jensen was looking for Alverde is there in the corner, but you know, just unable to get it to him. The South's going to bring in a few subs. They're going to bring in freshman Isaiah Davis, as well as freshman. What else do we got in there? Well, senior number 20, Yvonne Rybacek. Sophomore Isaiah Davis checking in. You know, speaking of freshmen, that's uh, that's definitely nice uh, for the South Kitsap to be able to pull from uh, Marcus Whitman, Cedar Heights, and uh, as well as Sedgwick, the junior highs, as they uh, they converge on the high school. You know, to have three teams worth of talent coming in, they really get the pick of the litter yeah. from, you know, a couple thousand uh, couple st thousand students. So it's good to see that the kids are able to bond and uh, gel as a team so quickly. Absolutely. Given that they haven't necessarily played a lot of ball together up until, uh, up until their high school career. Yeah. Fujita just off in the first one. Now, Coach, uh, Coach also put in Trey Haslam, it looks like, Fresh or sophomore forward, 6'2", so it's good he gets a little playing time as well. Mm, in and out on the second one. You know, that's kind of been the story of stadium tonight as far as the shooting's concerned. Ozinski, uh, who just picked up his third foul, just picked up uh, just picked up the board there. Mm, just under a minute left here to play. South by 31. Might have got away with a little walk there. Steal there. All right, and Fujita able to clean up the basket. Put back Fujita. Um, four fouls, but at this point, there's no reason that uh, Stadium should keep him uh, off the floor. No, and I'm almost surprised Meekle's out of the game. But maybe they want to give him a little rest, let him go the whole fourth. I'm thinking that you're going to get a heavy dose of Meekle come the uh, fourth quarter for Stadium to try to try to creep him back into the ball game. Absolutely. I five think, uh, five, five second, second call. Yeah. Definitely a rare call in uh, the high school game or college game for that matter. Boy, and Callahan's got a couple words for the ref there. He didn't agree with the call. I tell you what, he's been pretty tame in this game so far. <laughs> I haven't seen him move that, uh, move that spot very much. Absolutely. Well, this team playing so well, it's been a calm night for him. Uh, another south steal. Give him a little help here. It's a heady play by uh, Isaiah. Nice finish. Oh, to end the quarter. Well, we got 50 to 19 right now. Just ended the third quarter. South Kids out leading, leading the away Stadium Tigers right now. I know it's a cliche, but everything is going their way right now. <laughs> I mean, that that's a prime example right there. A few seconds left in the ball game. Quick turnover, quick bucket. 
you know, Stadium has has had a number of good looks, Absolutely. and uh, they haven't made too many mistakes. It's it's been a, a physical game, which definitely favors the Wolves. Mm -hmm. And as far as turnover goes, the teams are fairly even. But uh, well, SK getting getting to that free throw line quickly and the the five point play, making good decisions. And I really am impressed with the uh, the play of both of the point guards for South Kitsap. They do a great job of, of controlling the ball, distributing the ball. Additionally, taking shots when they need to, penetration. So to have a couple of point guards and to have a guy like Curry uh, be able to uh, kind of mentor a guy like Davis, which seems like uh, what's happening here is, is really huge Absolutely. for the program over the next few years. Well, they have a good mix of seniors as well as young guys. So, I mean, we got a lot of guys who are going to be able to step up. There, we got four juniors on the team this year, as well as looks like three, yep, three sophomores. So, you know, they're going to have a good young crop years to come. So what do you do if you're stadium in this game, Chris? I mean, you battled hard all game. I, you continue, obviously, the effort. But, you know, do you work it to Meikle? And it, and it actually looks like Meikle's not even out on the court at the moment. Well, I've, I've, uh, I've coached in these kind of situations, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, I would say the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to continue to work that offense, maybe bring in guys that haven't played much, because the, it, it, that time will be more valuable down the road. Absolutely. To, to let the guys in, to run some offense, do what you do, you know, and, and really fine tune what you're doing. It's not necessarily, you know, it, it's not the point that they have to make the game respectable. It's the point you're looking down the road when you've got a, a ball game that's maybe a little bit tighter and you got a guy on your bench and, and you kind of find out, you know, what these guys can do. It doesn't matter who the competition is. You find out, you know, in competition who they, you know, who they are and, and how they play. Definitely. And, I, and I'd say if Stadium can come back, possibly win this quarter, that's a victory in itself right there. Coach got to feel good about that. All right, Rybacek makes bold free throws. We're looking at 52-19. South Kids at just started the third quarter, or fourth quarter, big part. Curry's still with the full court, full court pressure. We'll see how long that lasts. I, I get a feeling and a, and a heck of a steal there. A good basket. I'll tell you, it looked like almost South Kitsap Spen wanted him to, to throw it down on that one. They're rooting for it. And near another steal there. Jump ball. Oh, a little frustration from Fujita there. But good hustle. I mean, they, he's been he's busting busting his tail the entire game. Absolutely, we've said his name a lot tonight, you know, and he's he's played great. The thing is, is South Kitsap, you know, has been a, a good program, and, and Coach Callahan such a class act that they're not going to let this game get too far out of hand. No. Content to swing the ball around the perimeter, and again, it, for, for South Kitsap, they can do the same thing. They can work their offense, you know, move the ball, move the play, you know, move the guys around, set screens, you know, do what you do. Definitely. But not necessarily put up uh, put up the shot as quickly as uh, maybe you would first, second quarter. Exactly. Well, I mean, there's no rush for South at this moment, you know. They just want to milk the clock, get out of here with the W. All right, and looks like we had a blocking foul. It's going to be a shooting foul. It's going to be on Rybachuk. That's his first, only his first. And uh, in comes uh, Greg Pickard, number 54, big man down low. Also a member of the uh, South Kitsap High School video production class. Hey. Thank you very much. I don't know, Nick, what would you rather be doing? Would you rather be playing ball? Or man in the camera right there. That one right there. That'd be a good one. Oh, man. Oh, I like that one down there. I like that one. Right? I tell you what, that's a tough call. I love basketball, but. As long as you got a stand, I mean, I'd imagine <laughs> your shoulder would get heavy. Oh, no kidding. Good. Got to hit the gym for the cameras like that. That's right. Is that Rybachuk just checked in there? Number uh, 20, it looks like, for, uh, uh, for the SK Wolves. A little long on the second free throw there. Loose ball goes to South. It's amazing to me. This is the first high school roster I've seen in a long time. This is the Wolf, talking about the Wolves here. The shortest player listed on the roster is 5'10". It's amazing. I mean, that's a lot of height to have. And a 6'6 and a 6'8 six, six six, guy, they might be able to get this figured out and have a have a heck of a second, seat, second half of the season. Absolutely. They look really good. The execution's been there all night. Well, nine of the South. Ooh. Nice move there. Well, it looks like Nate Henley put that one up, 5'9". But when you look at South's roster, Chris, I mean, you got three guys under six foot, and they're 5'10". So, I mean, they're peaking at six foot. One of those guys being Isaiah Davis. Expect him to maybe grow to six foot by his senior year. 
but every other player is to the other nine guys over six feet tall. When I was going to high school, we'd be lucky to field three, four guys over six feet tall. Well, you can't teach height. That's true. South has kind of dropped into more of a trap zone now, it looks like. They're not, not running the man-to-man -man as tight anymore, letting Stadium work the ball around the perimeter. And I really doubt that uh, Isaiah uh, Curry's going to be – I think he's going to he's gonna be playing, excuse me, Isaiah Davis. I doubt he's going to be playing that full court press. No, don't expect Probably him to. Probably going to be turning that off here. Rebichuk going around. Very nice left-handed layup off the glass. Rebichuk's another one of those guys we've been saying his name a lot tonight. Well, what it shows you is the depth. I mean, the Wolves are the yes. Wolves are 10 players deep. You know, Callahan subbed at will. We've seen pretty much every player on the team out on the floor up to this point, and all of them contributing. Yeah, well, which is you know kind of refreshing to see that you can actually have you know that many players uh, make that kind of an impact. Absolutely. As they work into the playoffs and they're playing, you know, maybe with one or two nights off, it'd be nice to uh, nice to have that kind of depth, not have to rely on five or six guys. Well, definitely. You know what it also does. I mean, the other you know because you see Callahan going about ten deep. Those other five guys. I mean, I bet they want to earn starting spots. Why not? You know, pushes they, pushes everybody else. Absolutely yeah. motivates. All right, had him in. There. All right. Looks like the peanut gallery's got a new chant, Nick. I'm not really picking up on that one. Let's see what we can't hear. I think it's something about we have great sportsmanship and we're really happy, uh, you know, that uh, we were able to host uh, such a gracious team and, you know, we're having a heck of a ball game and we hope you guys come back soon. Probably a so few less words, but I'm like, sure that's what it is. Probably less words. That'd be a, quite a complicated chant. Uh, just under six minutes left in the ball game, 56-20 South Kitsap Wolves. Look at this timeout. Callahan's got to be... Uh, you know, kind of, kind of keeping the guys under control. Probably turning off that press. I'd like to see that happen. I think, sure. as far as sportsmanship of the game, you got to, you got to pull that off just a little bit. Yes. Well, South Kitsap's known for their sportsmanship. Have been for years. Callahan, great coach, as we were saying earlier. I mean, I'm sure that's what he's saying. You know, telling them, hey, let's control the ball. Let's run the offense. There's no shot clock in high school, so no need to rush the shot at this point. South Kitsap's ready to take the floor. And Stadium does too. You know, Stadium's kept their cool in a tough environment, in a tough ball game. That's that's been very impressive about their performance tonight. They they played their hearts out. They might have been outsized and you know outman, but oh, nice little crowd like that crossover. Yeah, Davis with a nasty crossover up top there. That'll get the fans excited. Well, Trey Haslam with the offensive foul. Looks like he kind of dropped his shoulder into it. You know, that call could have gone either way, though. But at this point, if, if you're a referee, Chris, what are you thinking on that call? If it's a coin flip. I'm not even thinking about the referee right now. I'm thinking we need to get Isaiah, like, a nickname or something. <laughs> I think he's, he's only a sophomore, so we could really build that, you know? Like, uh, maybe, like, the Piston or something. Oops. Isaiah Thomas, right? You know what I mean? the Piston Thomas. I, I like that. I think. Well, I think if we if we had to ask him first before you, I don't think you can. You know, you can't give yourself a nickname. No, it's got to be given. It's got to be given. But I think you need confirmation of that nickname. So yes, we'll find out. We're going to talk to Isaiah after the game about that. Loose ball. For the younger folks who may not remember, Isaiah Thomas was a member of the two-time uh, NBA championship uh, Detroit Pistons in the late 80s, early 90s, before the Michael Jordan era. Great basketball player. And he also played point guard. No more number 11, though. Oh, yep. One, one number off. One number off. Well, I don't think Isaiah wants to be Isaiah Thomas. I think he'd much rather be, you know, Isaiah Davis. Make a name for himself. Five minutes to go, same score, 56-20. Absolutely. Stadium playing tough, trapping him in the corner, good luck. Very nice pass down low. That'd be Joey Asinski's basket. 6'6", six, six, junior forward. All right, rebound by Osinski there. 
Fouts surprisingly still pushing it. Well, maybe just to beat the trap. Hey, Nick, I just got more excellent information. Isaiah Thomas, there's also an Isaiah Thomas that is a point guard that plays at the University yes. of Washington. I tell you what, they, they had a very impressive win last yeah. night. Boy, who were they playing? Stanford. Stanford, Stanford with a one-point win. Bettinger hit the, hit the game winner with about four seconds left. Oh. Well, that's another rare Bet, You know, Bettinger was a, a former uh, South Kitsap Wolf. No. We're talking about Brockman. Brockman, Brockman yes. That, well, Bettinger, yeah. also an excellent player, played at Eastern Washington. I believe he took him to the state championship game one year as well. And then we had Adam Bennett in the building tonight. Adam Bennett, a former South Kitsap Wolves basketball star. Definitely up there with some of the, the past stars of this game, this high school game. Well, the way this team's looking tonight, I mean, there's going to be, there's definitely going to be some future stars, too. Absolutely. Young talent. Well, and I tell you what, teams like Foss, Lincoln, and Wilson, who are just, you know, a game or two separates them in this division, they they should take note of this game. And Thomas with another steal. Excuse da me, Davis, Davis with another steal. Boy, he's playing like Isaiah Thomas, though. He is just looking good. I tell you what, for, for a sophomore, he's very under control running this offense. Boy, and I looked down at the bench, and King hopped up real quick, and Calhoun said, uh-uh, you're done, big man, begging him to go in. Five unanswered points for the Wolves in the last uh, minute 10. Uh, brings the lead to 61-20. Looks like we're going to have Ricky Bloss, the, the, the sophomore, coming in, as well as Brandon Bell. Good round of applause for Pickard and birthday boy Ladeau. Check out of the ball game. I'll tell you what, though, South Kitsap makes a substitution. They just come back with bigger bodies. It's amazing. That's huge. And they don't run They're out huge. of size. Well, I think the big factor we thought tonight was going to be for stadium for was speed, and South has really done a good job answering that. Good ball movement. Nice pass. And Fajita with the basket. Fajita's a hard worker right there. Definitely, uh, you know, definitely working, working hard to keep him in the ball game or at least make it somewhat, uh, you know, a little bit, little more respectable. I mean, they're, they're, they're just playing hard. You see stadium, stadium setting traps. Oh, boy. They're running, I, a, running a full court press. And speaking of Vegeta, I think he just picked up his fifth. That'll be it for him if it is. Yep, that is his fifth. Well, checking in right now, we got number 35, Sam Walters, a junior for Stadium. But I tell you what, I, I give it up to Vegeta. He he played a great ball game, played his heart out. Young man on the free throw line, Ricky Bloss, in a one in one situation for the Wolves. Bloss, a uh, six foot three inch sophomore. Not bad. A big big body. I tell you what, I saw him playing a little bit in the JV game earlier, you know, and it was he was impressive out there. Yeah, the JV team uh, lost a uh, they lost a tough one there, five points in overtime. Uh, they lost a, a small lead that they had towards the end of the game, but it was a good warm up to this one to this matchup. But that yeah, overtime, great game. Yeah, you play JV to get to varsity, right? Yeah, you exactly. Deal with tough ball games and. Hey, you got to start somewhere. You keep working, and I tell you what, you watch a team like this, the way the Wolves have you know, put on this show, it makes you work even harder because you know you want to be a part of that. Definitely something. definitely something for the fans and as well as the coaching staff and all the parents here. Definitely got to be proud of the team tonight. And number 12, who is that? Another turnover by the SK Wolves. I think that's got to be probably close to a half dozen in this quarter. Boy, they got uh, a stadium few. running that trap has been, you know, very impressive. And a tough foul. Hard foul there. Number 10, Might have been a bit of a frustration foul there as Trey Haslam that will head to the free throw line here to shoot two. It's good. 
you know, South Kitsap sitting at a six and three, looking to go seven and three with about two and a half minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. It makes you wonder, you know, how did how did the start of the season go for him? You know, I mean, with such a young young core, I mean, probably took them a couple games to really get used to it, but they they've really settled down and stepped up tonight. Well, last month they, uh, you know, they had lost a, a real tough uh, one point ball game uh, at Gig Harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's a, that's one they needed to win right there. You know, and, and it's a matter of trying to get uh, you know get back to the playoffs. Got to win the close ball games. And I think that uh, when they when they rematch with Gig Harbor, I think well I'm sure Gig Harbor is going to be improved. But you know just watching these guys, the improvements that they've been making. Absolutely. I think well, they can they can they can win that game. They're going to need to win that game absolutely. coming down the stretch. Well, this will be South's third win in a row. If they can hold on here. Very nice move there by Nate Henley. And a near steal, and I think that, yep, that will go back to stadium. What's Davis good? is a ball hawk. That's what he is. Loose balls, uh, making steals, making plays. Well, it's just great to see, you know, Quick they're hands. still fighting. Quick three. You know, not a bad three to take, though. 40-point ball game with, uh, you know, just over two minutes left. Why not? Hey, put it up. Another bucket by an underclassman. Like to see that. Trey Haslam. And I tell you what, Callahan's probably telling him to slow down, but for Trey Haslam and Isaiah Davis, they're sophomores. There is no slowdown for them. You know, they they're living for the moment. There's another sophomore. Well, not only that, but uh, you know, a lot of these guys will play. Uh, they'll play the flex. They'll play the swing. They'll play, you know, both uh, a little bit of JV and then a little bit of varsity. And as far as the minutes go, this is the stage, you know, for some of them, they, this is the time that they get on this stage. Absolutely. This is the time for them to prove, you know, that, that they belong on the floor when, when the game is, you know, tight. So it, it's hard to let off the uh, let off the gas, you know, when you're playing so well. And, and, and on top of that, you're trying to impress your coaches for the next day, you know, the next game. Yeah. Maybe get in a little bit sooner. Definitely. Well, you know, you're looking at guys that are 15, 16, 17 years old on the court. I. Uh, you and I remember those ages, man, how much fun it was to play basketball. It's still great to play basketball, but, I mean, that's this is what these kids are living for, it seems like, right now. Well, I think the that's the, you said it best, though. It's hard to stop. You know, it's hard to let off the gas. You yeah. know, it's hard to, uh, to slow down. Mm. Well, I tell you what, I look up here, and, and i got to commend Stadium on this. They have cut the fouls down, only nine fouls, to where they had about a dozen-plus in the first half, matching South's nine fouls, which... South only had four in that first half. So, you know, the half-court offense for South Kitsap was 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 decent tonight, but it's been the transition game that's really you know pulled them away from uh, away from the Tigers. Definitely, it's been, it's been been able to get out in transition, you know, to get those fouls, to to get on the free throw line, you know, really towards the the end of the second quarter and then the beginning of this third quarter is where they where they did all their damage. Definitely, and you thought they would have just slowed down, played some half-court, you know let their size take over. But this South team is, not only are they big, they are fast. They're going to be a force to reckon with. And as I look at the standings now, I see the, the bridge division. This will put South at 3-2, and two, tied with Wilson. And Wilson also had a game tonight. Let's see with Central Kitsap. So that'll be, that'll be interesting to hear the results of that for many South fans. Well, Central Kitsap is ranked, uh, was definitely in the top three. I, actually, I believe that Central Kitsap was the uh, the number one ranked team by the Kitsap Sun in the uh, in the West Sound Power Poll. The, the South Kitsap Wolves were ranked fifth in the uh, in the West Sound Power Poll, and they were you know the number one ranked team in their in their division, yeah. the Bridge Division. Bridge so. division. Oh, I'm sure Foss and Lincoln will have a little something to say about that. Both of them, five, Foss five and zero, Lincoln four and one in the division. I know those guys down to the sun, Chuck Stark and those guys, they, they, they do their homework. So oh, yes. They're going to rank South Kitsap that high. They, uh, they know what they're talking about. I tell you what, by the performance we've seen here tonight by South, it's no wonder. Well, we have just under a minute left to go. Ooh. Second free throw banked up and in. Did, Thomas, Davis. Or did uh, Davis call that bank? I think I heard him. Call I, that bank. I called him. Give half a point for those, right? I think he should. <laughs> you know. I don't think they play it in high school. I tell you what, they they go in. Yeah, exactly. Hey. That's all that matters. He meant for the ball to go in, and it did. Well, we've got about 45 seconds left here in the game. 67-26 South over the visiting stadium, Tigers. 
How's Brandon Bell getting in the book there? A 6'7", uh, looks like he's a junior. Getting on the board with a foul. Hey, getting on the board, that's all that matters. A sloppy play, but Isaiah Davis. Oh, he, yeah, he doesn't want to slow down. Well, oh, he is pinballing off stadium defenders and manages to make it past half court. That was an impressive little dribble. Private shot up and under. You know, it looked like there were about seven stadium defenders guarding right there. <laughs> I think that's he two. dribbles right by him. That's pretty impressive. Sophomore. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Well. Interesting thing in this ball game, and, and what I've seen is that that uh, Tyon Curry has a lot of talent, their, their senior point guard, and, and it'll be interesting. I want to know when the, Wolves make the play, when the Wolves make the playoffs if they'll put Curry and, uh, and Davis on the floor at the same time. I'd be interested to see. Kind of like a Steve Nash, Leandro Barbosa combo like they have in, the, in Phoenix. And I've been told by my, uh, my constituent here that it's uh, Tyon Curry. Tion Curry, Tion. excuse me, excuse me, Tion Curry. Well, looks like we got about 10 seconds left. Private Chuck. And the band stands to play some excellent music. 1.4 seconds remaining, foul called. South Kitsap's gonna head to the free throw line. I'll tell you what, Chris, I've had a great time tonight, man. Hey, and awesome. hey, check it out. The South Kids Have Crowd's encouraging uh, the Stadium Tigers to drive home safely. Oh, well, that's, so that's nice good. of them. You know, we used to, we when I was in high school, way back when, when I was in high school, we used to do uh, start the bus. Well, they, you want them to warm up the bus well, and you know, make sure it's running but, okay. But they're using drive home safely. I think that's great. That's awesome. Wonderful. Birthday boy on the line for one more. Short ball game. No whistle blown there. 69-28, your final score. South Kitsap Wolves defeating the visit visiting Stadium Tigers. That uh, that brings the Wolves record to uh, looks like seven and three overall, three and two in the league. And uh, once again, uh, we'd like to uh, thank you for joining us for the South Kitsap uh, High School Boys Varsity Basketball Game. Hey, Chris, I'm going to give you a moment here. I love you, bro. He's going to awesome. give me a hug. I gave you a half hug. Give me a half hug. I'll Man a hug. hug later. All right. We'd All also right. like to thank the students of the video production program here at South Kitsap who made this TV program possible. And, again, the final score, South Kitsap Wolves 69 and Stadium 28. So, so long. long and good evening from South Kitsap High School. Did you steal my line? Go Wolves. I stole your line. All right. <laughs>